So the Mishimoto oil cooler comes with three parts basically. It's this thing right here, smaller one, and the bigger one. What you want to do is oil up that oil ring with the smaller one, and then the sandwich plate, and then finally the bigger one, and the rubber thing on the top. Oh, I forgot to put oil on this. I'm going to do that now. Got some old oil. Don't worry. That's, that's actually uh, not that old. Oh. Yep, so oil it up, put it on top, and then take your, uh, what is this called, an adapter or extender, we'll go ahead and extend that, so you can go ahead and extend, again, so long side down, you probably know it, when you try. Tighten it up. Get the treads. Tighten it up. Put your uh, uh, your fittings, and then we'll go from there. So once everything is in place, it should look a little something like this. Hopefully, I'm not sure yet how I'm gonna mount that since I don't have a bracket. Probably just gonna drill something on the plastic and bolt it on to that. Uh, splash guard, but yeah, looks good. And here's my filter already in there. Uh, it does help to have a little, uh, I forgot, these are called a wrench, I think. A big wrench. Because um, these things, I don't really, well, I didn't try looking for one, but those for sure, I didn't have any that are that size of a regular wrench, a ratchet wrench. I'm not sure what they're called. Yeah. Almost done here. Um, only thing I have to do is put the filter on, the math sensor and the map sensor, some two two uh, lines, and that should be it. So I need to figure out where this goes. By the way, forgot which hose I'll need to tap into. So be right back. I'll show you guys that. Okay, so everything is all mounted on now. The oil cooler is mounted on to the. Uh, the bumper hopefully it'll hold uh, I did have to drill some and gotten some bolts and nuts and that should be it it's really sturdy in there along with some zip lines here got the washer fluid back on also figured out where this goes animal cars there is actually a, a kind of a special way to kind of do this because it has to go to the brake boost and you got to make a T so I ratted that all the way here up here and then finally right over here so in some cases, people do need to cut something, but in my case, um, there's a, a connector here that goes along, along this, this connector goes along here, and that connects to this one right here. Oops, sorry, this one right here. I'm gonna show that. I'm gonna show you that connection real quick, but it's basically bolted onto that missing bolt right there, and. Uh, I did my T, so you guys can see right over here. Other than that, I'm about ready to get. I'm ready to put some oil. Got all the thermal cloth I needed to put to the math sensor. Yeah, I'm almost gonna start it up soon. Prime the oil and do all the good stuff. All right, so I got my oil here. I'm using Motul 5W30. And I think I'm going to be putting in six quarts. It's not more. And that means I'm going to have to order some more oil. Hopefully it's enough. But yeah, I'm going to put this in, prime the system up, check the oil from the dipstick. And we will go from there. So here comes the oil, slow and steady. I put a bag on the filter just in case I accidentally spill some. At least it goes in the bag first and not the filter. Yeah, I'll finish this up. What a satisfying sound. All right, so everything is hooked up. I'm gonna go ahead and prime the oil system. And to do that, if you guys have a manual car, all you have to do is press the clutch, the gas, and then I have to push to start. And then just press that, and it should prime the system up. Now I just wait until it's kinda done the cycle. And then there we go. So right now is the first start. My heart is a little 
little jittery. It's racing. But hopefully it doesn't blow up. Clutch in and here we go. Whew. Okay, wants to die. I'm gonna go ahead and check some check the engine jet. Can't really talk. I'm gonna go ahead and check the engine bay for some leaks. And we'll go from there. And there you guys have it. She's alive. Right now, at least, hopefully, it'll stay alive. Yeah, sounds good. Doesn't seem to be leaking somewhere. Uh, let me see the exhaust. Since it is a turbo car, it is gonna be a little quieter. Yep, sounds like a stock car, actually. Nice. I'm gonna give it a couple of revs, or actually time to warm up and give it a couple of revs to see how she sounds like. So uh, the revs are here. Hopefully it doesn't blow up, but here we go. Oh, you can really hear that blow off valve. that but it actually sounds good it's um i've had un uh, well equal length heathers before and it, they didn't sound like this this one has a bit of a deeper tone into it probably because of the turbo but it's, it's actually not bad uh, i thought i'd miss the unequal length sound and actually kind of not like the equal length sound but hearing this right now it actually sounds really good took out all the rasp from full catless by the way so and I've tried that with an equal link full catless and it just didn't sound good to me so that's a good thing to note if you guys ever buy a, a turbo kit equal link isn't really that bad it actually it actually sounds really really good so, hmm. Next thing I'm gonna do is probably try and clean up a little bit, put things back together, and yeah, it sounds really good. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the bumper back. Uh, I don't have a crash beam yet. I'm planning to buy a grinder to cut mine, just because I want to maintain the tow hook and put my tow hook license plate. I am in California, so I don't want to attract more attention than it already is. But um, yeah, so my horn is basically mounted over there for now. Everything should just go on the way it should. Again, that crash beam is important, but somewhat not important because it only kind of is for low speed crashes just to protect your front stuff. Uh, radiator and stuff like that but hopefully in the coming days I wouldn't have any trouble and by that time I have my grinder and or even buy a drift armor I don't know yet and go from there